these are the top 10 mistakes that are holding you back in Hogwarts Legacy. Now, as many of you have probably realised by playing through the game, there is a whole host of things that you can do, whether it's be collectibles, quests, main story quests or side quests, whether it's fighting enemies, whether it's saving beasts, or a whole host of other things. There's plenty of things to keep you busy and occupied with your time in-game, but these 10 top mistakes that players are making, or things that you may not have realised are in the game, are going to help you to accelerate your gameplay to the next level and enjoy the most out of Hogwarts Legacy. So the first thing here is try to get your Alohomora spell to at least level 2, but preferably level 3 as soon as you are possibly able to do so. This will allow you to unlock many, many rooms and houses, as well as secrets all across the world of Hogwarts Legacy. And the earlier you get these leveled up, the more that you can do this as you are doing your main story quests and your side quests, as well as exploring the world. Now, looking at getting level 3 initially it might seem a little bit daunting because you do need to get a fair amount of these demiguise statues. What I did was get level 2 pretty much straight away as soon as I got the quest, then did a few more main story missions, broke it up a little bit, and on my way around, grabbed some more demiguises, and then just collected the last few that I needed to get level 3. A really good top tip for this is you can find a lot of these demiguises around the map. If you hover over the map, particularly on the hamlets that are found throughout the world, you can see that all of these, or most of these, have at least one demiguise in. So, for example, Upper Hogsmeade here has a demiguise. You have another one here in Pit Upon Ford, which is right at the top north of the map. Then you also have quite a few in Hogwarts. Now these are a little bit difficult to find and some of them do require you to level up the spell to level 2 and 3 to find. But you can at least get 4 of these with just level 1 Alohomora. And there is also 7 or 8 of the Demiguise statues that you can get with just level 1 Alohomora in Hogsmeade. So just in this upper section of the map you can easily, easily get to level 2. My personal recommendation would be to go to Hogsmeade, get 7 or 8 of these from here. Then go ahead and go to these hammer let's grab these ones and if you do need additional ones maybe you don't want to find any in Hogwarts yet again the hamlets that you can find further down the map for example Arranshire here and then just underneath Hogwarts to the south here lower Hogsfield also have one each in so that'll easily get you to level two and then you can work on level three as you go in the quicker you get these leveled up the more loot that you'll be able to access now carrying on with this theme of the map showing us really really cool features and useful information you might know that if you zoom all the way out, you can actually see in the top right hand corner of your screen the amount of collection chests, field guide pages, Merlin trials, etc. that you have completed for each of these zones. Now as you can see, some of these I have 100 percented and if you are trying to get something specific, this can tell you what you have and haven't done in an area. This can be really useful if you are trying to hit a particular milestone in your field guide and want to know where you can get more of these activities done. And if you are somebody that's going to try and 100% the field guide, one really important important thing to note is that Hogwarts does seem quite daunting with all of the amount of stuff you got to get here. For example, I've only done 20 out of the 35 collection chests here. What's really good to know is that you can actually hover over the individual sections either on the map or on the left hand side here. And when you go into those sections, it will break these down into individual areas. So for example, I still need another four collection chests from the astronomy wing somewhere. So it's not narrowed down too much, but it does give you a little bit less of a broad indicator of where you can find some of these for example demiguise statues again and field guide pages too. Now some of the beasts in the game do offer some really really useful resources when you do feed and look after them inside your vivarium so as soon as you've got access to your room of requirement and indeed the different vivariums that you unlock regardless of where you are on the quest line for this you should always try and get yourself firstly some diracles as these will allow you to collect diracle feathers as you can see here you pick those up and you will gain diracle feathers you get three per time that you pick these up and the other beast that you should aim to get is the Neasel for the Neasel's fur. And again, you get three of these. Now, every beast in Hogwarts Legacy has a 25 minute cooldown. So you can collect those materials once you feed and brush them again after that time frame. The reason you specifically want these two animals or these two beasts inside your vivariums is because when you head over to your loom and you want to apply a trait, for example, if we go into the view traits option here, level ones, you do need the puff skin fur, but these are pretty easy to get. Most people already start off with puff skins because they are part of the quest. 
The reason you want Diracles is because Diracol Feathers are to apply the level 2 version of traits. And of course the Kneasel Fur then is for the level 3 variation of the traits. These are really powerful additions that can be put onto legendary gear. So as you can see here on this particular piece I currently have Manipulation 3 which is where Imperio Target does significantly increase damage. So in other words when you convert that enemy to fight for you they're going to do a lot more damage. So that's really useful. Another example that I've got here is on the glasses I'm wearing which have got Ancient Magic Focus 3 and this is significantly increased Ancient Magic Meter Fill Ray and this is really really useful as well. So to be able to apply these to your gear particularly end game it's going to be really really helpful but even towards the early and mid game getting those Diracles in for the level 2 traits is going to be super useful and can give you a massive spike in power on your gear so I would certainly recommend getting those ASAP. Now a really great location to find both of these beasts at their dens is actually in the Morween Lake area right down the bottom south just next to where it connects to Manor Cape. You'll see if you're hovering onto this south coast just across from the bridge here there is a Neasel Den in the bottom corner and just slightly north of that there is a Diracol Den. Now there's a flu fire to the right and a flu fire to the left as well as one behind so take your pick of the area but this is a really great location to capture at least a couple of these beasts so that you can start looking after them and breeding them in order to get a lot of these materials to apply those traits to your equipment. There is of course other dens throughout the map but these are two that are in very close proximity. The next thing is going to not be neglecting your ancient magic traces and in turn your ancient magic meter. As you can see when you collect traces of ancient magic throughout the world you will get an increase to your ancient magic meter so each one of these gives you an additional bar in the bottom right if I just go out of the challenges menu and go back to the main game you'll see in the bottom right just below my spells and above my health bar I actually have four of these currently and the more traces of ancient magic you collect the more that you get so you can see here I'm 6 of 12 on the fifth and final bar getting added to my character and this is really really good particularly early on as it does give you an option for a super high amount of damage so getting that third one early early doors is really crucial and then somewhere around the mid to late game getting your fourth one and then evidently your fifth one in that late game or at any point where you want to get these is going to be super worthwhile as they do give you a huge damage boost. Now a little bit of a potential spoiler here so feel free to skip this one if you don't want to hear about the unforgivable curses yet but getting these ASAP is going to be a really really strong option for your character in Hogwarts Legacy. All three of these curses are really really good as first and foremost they break through any magical barrier or or shield that an enemy puts up for so for example they could have up a yellow shield a purple shield or a red shield which of course usually would correlate to one of these types of spells but these curses can break through any type of shield now in order to get a Vada Kedavra which is ultimately the third and final curse that you do learn it is following Sebastian's quest line and he will eventually teach you if you keep asking him to teach you the curses how to use this spell. Now it is a bit of a sinister and dark storyline and questline in order to get this but it is pretty cool and if you are someone that wants to get the most out of the game then I would certainly recommend getting yourself down the dark arts pathway as these are incredibly strong spells. Particularly Imperio if you're outnumbered you can cast that on an enemy and they will fight alongside you and help you to damage the other enemies in that area and in that battle and of course Avada Kedavra is an insta kill which you can actually chain up with certain talents so that it will kill everybody that is cursed obviously you've got three curses by default and you can actually increase it so some other spells like Expelliarmus can also apply a curse so then you can get multiple kills with one Avada Kedavra cast and essentially it makes this an absolute cheat code for the game it is super super powerful you really want to get hands on with this spell as early as you can because it is going to give you a massive massive boost in power Another really important tip, particularly early on in the game when you haven't completed as many Merlin Trails as what you might do later on, is to continuously sell any less good or unwanted gear because your inventory slots are going to fill up very, very quickly. So anything that isn't as good as what you've currently got equipped, I would recommend selling every time you come back to Hogsmeade or any vendor throughout the world. It's really important to note here that often this gear, like you can see on screen now, will show as less good than what you have equipped when it is unidentified. However, once the item becomes identified, it can often be better than what you currently have equipped. So always identify a piece of gear before selling it, even though the 200 gold or the 150 might be quite tempting. You certainly want to identify these first as often, like I say, they can be actually better pieces once you have identified them. 
Now, you may or may not know, but the way to increase your gear storage in the game or the amount of slots you have available to pick up gear is by completing Merlin Trails. Now, each of these milestones will give you a plus two expansion to your slots. And once you've completed all of these, you actually end up with having 40 gear slots, but you do only start off the game with around 28 or 30 slots. So that's a great reason to get doing these Merlin Trials whenever you come across them out in the world as soon as you can, so that you can pick up more gear and less often do you have to destroy stuff or run back to town to sell items. Merlin Trials can be found on the map by the leaf icon that you can see here on screen that you will need a Mallow Sweet Leaves every single time that you activate one of these. So I would recommend planting some of those in your room of requirements if you haven't already done this and then you will need to go up to it interact and complete the trial if you have most or all of the spells in the game unlocked all of the basic spells then you will probably be able to complete 90 percent of these merlin trials once you work out what they do none of the merlin trials will require you to do any unforgivable curses in case some people choose to not use the dark arts and also the merlin trials do not require you to use your conjuration magic so things that you would use inside the room of requirements so that leaves you with your yellow spells, your purple spells and your red spells alongside some of your utility like Wingardium Leviosa and Lumos. So to reiterate if you have most of your spells unlocked you can probably get a fair few of these done if not all of these done so it's certainly worth doing them when you come across them so that you have more gear slots unlocked. Disillusionment chests are the white chests with an eye on the top of them. If you see these chests what you need to do is use your disillusionment spell while you are out of eyesight of the chest. Sneak up on it whilst you are invisible and then open up the chest. It's pretty simple once you know how to do it. These will net you 500 gold per time or 500 galleons per time. So this is really, really good for getting some money. There is a particular large amount of these chests throughout the Hogsmeade area. So if you are looking to get some good money early on, that is a great location to go to. And one thing I found this particularly useful for is when you start to complete some of the flying quest line and actually unlock broom upgrades. You can come over here to the Quidditch shop, speak to Albie Weeks, and you'll be able to buy these upgrades nicely without having to worry about your money situation. And when you do have a level 3 broom, it does make you fly a lot faster and saves you a lot of time. Not to mention, it feels fantastic. The next thing that you need to do here is to make sure to use your talent points. Now, if you did see my beginner's guide, I said once you first unlock talents around level 5 to 10, you may want to save some of your points for once you've unlocked most or all of the spells. That being said, there is some great stuff you can get in core before this point. And of course, once you have unlocked most or all of the spells in the game, then you certainly want to be spending these points as they are going to give you a huge, huge boost to your power and combat capability. You can put talent points into the spells to give each spell a slight edge and increase its damage in some way. You can spec into dark arts. What I found particularly useful is, like I mentioned before, getting the upgrade that gives Expelliarmus a cursing effect. Blood curse, which allows you to deal damage to all cursed targets when attacking any cursed enemy. And then, of course, Avada Kedavra Mastery, which is killing an enemy with Avada Kedavra, kills all cursed enemies. That's just to name a few, but there is some really good ones. Another couple that I really enjoyed was running whilst you are in disillusionment. This is great. And then having a bigger area for Petrificus Totalus. I've used this... Numerous times whilst exploring around the world and managing to go into encampments and kind of take out all the enemies in stealth has been a particular fun feature for me. So I've really enjoyed this. There is some really good stuff in the room of requirements to upgrade your potions and your plants as well. So whatever your playstyle is, make sure you're using these. And of course, core is probably going to be where you'll spend most of your points. Some great things to get is, of course, your spell knowledge to give you access to each of the different layers of spells so that you can quick switch between these. Especially helpful for keeping the gameplay fluid mid-combat. A fantastic one which is basic cast mastery which every basic cast that you hit on an enemy reduces your spell cooldowns and ancient magic catches and throws disarmed enemy weapons is again another fantastic way to do this you can cast expelliarmus so when an enemy drops the weapon you can actually throw it back and deal damage to them this is a really fun one alongside swift here which you can hold down dodge to vanish and quickly reappear nearby. This allows you to reposition in the middle of a fight and is a fantastically useful ability, as well as many of the other ones here. So some great stuff to spend in talents. Don't miss out on these. Now, if you are in combat, do not forget to use your consumables, whether it's your plants or your potions, as these will give you a massive boost to combat capabilities. For example, I'm fighting a big group of spiders here. So if I whack down one of these venomous tentaculars, 
that's basically going to help me to kill these a lot quicker and basically have an ally in the combat. As you can see, it does massive amounts of damage to these spiders and also puts a venom on them so that they take tick poison damage over time. It's just one example of the many consumables that you can use in the game, but this is very, very strong, particularly with the Room of Requirements talent upgrade. And that's pretty much solo taking out all of these spiders. So they're super worthwhile using and you definitely want to get hands on with these as soon as you are able to because it will give you a massive power boost. If you've got them planted or you've got some of the hopping pots in your room of requirements, there's absolutely no reason to not use these in combat to help you win the fight. And finally here then, speaking of the room of requirement, I have made a full guide on this. If you do want to watch it, I will leave it linked on the end screen of today's video. But some really crucial things just as a quick pointer. You want to make sure that you've got all of the automatic production things placed down. So, for example, the hopping pots here. These ones will actually give you potions every 12 minutes. The only issue with these is that you can't choose the potions. So like particularly me here at Endgame where I have maximum Wigan Weld potions. These two are kind of on the back bench until I can actually use these potions up and then additionally pick these up. But earlier on in the game, these are particularly useful because you're going to be going through more health potions and they can give you some of the more expensive or rarer material requiring potions, such as the invisibility down the bottom here or the thunder brew. And again, some of these you might even need for assignments, so it can be really handy to get them for free every 12 minutes. The next thing is going to be the chopping tables. These are going to be super useful. Every nine minutes, they will give you a random herbology ingredient. So there you can see I've got mallow sweet leaves, which you need for the Merlin trials. But they can give you any plant in the game. Again, earlier on when you get these, they can be particularly useful because you might not yet have access to some of the larger plants in the game or some of the rarer plants. So having this can give you the chance to get some of those materials earlier on. Of course, you want to have as many of the potting stations as you can because these every 10 minutes will grow or every 5 minutes, depending what you put down. But these will grow into plants and you can harvest these every single time they're off cooldown. So the sooner you get these on the go, they are going to be really, really helpful. One thing that is often overlooked by players towards the start of the game is actually these material refiners and these are going to give you 10 moonstone every 10 minutes. 10 doesn't sound like a lot but after you've picked up the moonstone once from each of these, the second time you pick it up you will actually be in profit. And then you can use all of this additional moonstone to then put down some of the other tables that we've just looked at, as well as decorate your room of requirements. So these for me are a must have and should be one of the first things that you purchase when you are trying to get progress in your room of requirements. Finally, we should mention here the composters. These are going to be great for adding additional output to your potting stations. And so that's going to allow you to get extra yield from some of your plants. This is going to be particularly useful for some of the bigger plants. For example, if you put it on here, it doubles the yield. It only increases yield by one on every plant, but for some of the big ones like the Venomous Tentacular, for example, that's actually a double, so it's really, really useful. So that is pretty much going to cover it. These are the top 10 mistakes that you could be making or top 10 things that you might not be doing in Hogwarts Legacy that could be holding you back or that might now give you an advantage because you now know about them. Hopefully this video has helped you out. If it has, please do be sure to drop me a like on the video as it really does help to support me and my content. And if you do want to see more Hogwarts Legacy videos, tips and guides, then make sure to subscribe to the channel down below as there is plenty more coming here soon. Other than that, I would like to thank you for watching and I will catch you on the next one. Take care and peace.